about applause signs. <laughs> They're always cute to respond. It doesn't seem fair. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Your overwhelming reaction to me is like a shot of ego juice being injected by a hypodermic needle of your choice that hopefully has been sterilized. Ouch. <laughs> you wouldn't want the other kind. Now, what was it I wanted to talk about? There was something else I wanted to... Was it the Olympics? I wonder... what I wanted to talk about. I am so upset with the tabloids right now. I am literally livid. Look at these lies they're spewing about my half-brother Clay. Look at that. Can you get a close-up? <laughs> half-brother or hog-like host caught shoplifting. I mean, that is just... And look what they've done. You know what they've done? Do I have a double chin? No. No, I don't. I mean, I certainly, if I go like that, you know, and you catch me low, you're going to see something. But these are... They're manufactured. They do it to all the stars now. It's just wrong. Oh, look at this. Julia Roberts and Benjamin Brad are feuding. I knew it. It seemed too good to be true, because everyone said, oh, they're so wonderful, and they're so happy. And it's not true. It's not true. You never... And, and she's aged terribly. <laughs> oh, I gotta read this. And you're not gonna grab it from me. <laughs> well, what was I talking about? I believe you were talking about your half-brother, Clay. Oh, yes. They have... They being these people have accused my half-brother Clay of being a shoplifter. And that is so outrageously false. Let me tell you, I don't know much, okay? I've never burdened myself with a lot of buckler. <laughs> but I will tell you this, Clay Glick is no shoplifter. Case in point, half-brother Clay and I we're returning from Costco this one time, it, and um, my half-brother Clay suddenly realized that the, <clears throat> the, ch that the checkout gal had given him an extra dollar in change. And my half-brother Clay wanted to turn that car around and drive seven and a half miles back to Costco to return that dollar. <laughs> Seven and a half miles. <laughs> Granted, he ended up not doing it, but he seriously considered it. And that has got to count for something in this man's America. <laughs> Anyways, our first guest group is gonna love. And if you don't, I pity your ignorance. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the incredible Ironhead and Jeff. <laughs> for you in your dressing room. What? You left a shoplifting thief loose in my dressing room? Are you insane, girl? I'm so disappointed in your lack of wisdom. Cute hair, though. through my things. Well, see, what happened was, uh, you remember that pen I lent you? Twelve years ago. Right. Well, I was just wondering, you know, if it still had ink in it, because if it still had ink, I was going to get another pen, because, well, that's a good pen. <laughs> so, how's it going, Bubbles? Don't Bubbles me. Clayton Moore Glick. You have besmirched the good name of Glick. Oh, horse feathers. You have besmirched and besmirched and besmirched and besmirched and besmirched. Is this or is this not true? Oh, I don't even know Julia Roberts. Not Julia Roberts, schnook. You, shoplifting. Did you or did you not avail yourself of a five-finger discount on those Rona Martin cufflinks? The truth, boy! 
Bubbles, that really hurts, you know, that you would even think a story like that is true. I cannot believe that you would shoplift when I just sent you $600 two Christmases ago. Tampa's expensive. You don't live in Tampa. That's the point. I can't afford to, not with the 600 bucks you send me every two years. Your stepmother is in a full body cast, and you have not found yet. Yeah, yeah, same old, same old. Look, let me tell you something. Let's cut to the chase. You have always been jealous of me, you know that? Ever since we were playing in that band and we used to sing together, I used to get all the attention. Everyone liked me and that used to just chap your little ass. Liar! If I hadn't just been decuticled, I'd suck you in the yapper! That's all you ever do is put me down. You never help me like a half-brother should. Liar! That's right, I've been doing stand-up for six years now. And I have a half-brother that has his own television show and I can't even get booked. Oh, what are you talking about? You were just booked for shoplifting. Well, you're just jealous because I spermed your old lady Dixie before you did. You know what? Cuticles be damned! All right, let's go. Come on, come on. Hit me with your best... Shot. two losers and you won't even book me on the show. Art out of Jeff! Aren't they remarkable? Aren't they wonderful? Iron Head and Jeff, ladies and gentlemen. That's so exciting. It really is. And where will you fellas be appearing next? I think it's Harris. Yeah, it sounds right. <laughs> oh my God! He's fine. Oh, that's good news. Well, we'll be right back these words. Coming up next, Molly Shannon. Later on, my half-brother Clay, who I might have mentioned earlier, will be performing some of his wonderful stand-up comedy, and trust me, you are in for a real treat if you... <laughs> but before we get to that, I'd like to bring up my first guest. She's as cute as a button, and she's scrumptious! And please say hello to the wonderful, delicious Molly Shannon. Oh my God! Oh! Oh! oh. <laughs> they thought you'd be coming here. I'm angry at them. Hello, lovely lady. Oh! So nice. So oh. nice to see you, Jiminy. Nice to see you, Molly. So nice to be on your show. Oh, you look beautiful, and you Thank smell you. so wonderful. You did so many wonderful skits on <laughs> SNL. You did so many wonderful people. <laughs> and I would watch them, and I would laugh because they were so sensational. <laughs> what were some of the characters that you did, Molly Shannon? Um... Come on. I did, I did, uh, Sally O'Malley. Sally O'Malley, tell us about that lady. Well, that's, it's just like, that's a woman that says, I'm, I'm 50, 50 years old. And I, I'm, I'm imitating, a lot of times I'm imitating my dad, but I'm doing it as a woman. Yes. You know, but if they're... Because your dad to... is a cross-dresser. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but you, 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 you take characters and you switch sexes. You just switch the sex. Well, I just take part. I guess because my dad's such a dominant figure, I take parts of him and then I exaggerate, exaggerate. You him. exaggerate your dad's dominance and then you put a dress on it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Very good. So it's kind of like Michael Jackson and the little monkey. <laughs> Because I hear that he puts them in all different dresses. Sometimes it's a, a full tuxedo, and sometimes it's Liza. <laughs> Let me ask you something. You played Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. How did you know that? Oh, Dorothy, I cannot what, believe that you have that on your sheet. Dorothy, look at that. Dorothy in Wizard oh of Oz. Oh, my goodness. And I love Dorothy. I love I loved, I loved that movie. Judy Garland's my favorite performer. Judy Garland was wonderful. She was, yeah. I knew, I knew someone who used to be her dresser named Ruby, and it was vodka and ding-dongs after a show. That's all she'd do. And eventually, as the evening wore on, she'd pour the, the vodka into the ding-dongs, and then she'd pour the vodka on the ding-dongs, and then she'd just pour it on her head and say, I'm a ding-dong, you know? <laughs> and I think that it's a shame. Oh. 
<laughs> I don't think what happened in today's Hollywood, which is good. Hello? Jiminy, hi, it's Jerry. I was just one. Uh, no, not now. <laughs> well, you are everything that I've... I've heard so many great things about you. And I've heard that you're mysterious, and I heard... <laughs> I've heard you love pranks! That you love to do pranks on people, <laughs> is that true? Really? Where did you hear that? Who am I thinking of? Oh, no, I'm, I'm thinking of Patty Duke. Oh. I, I, I always get mixed up. I love to do pranks, so I remember one time, <clears throat> my father, I, 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 I put a firecracker in his Ovaltine and blew three teeth out. But... <laughs> I think you're I, I think you're an absolute beauty. Honest Thank to God, you. I saw you walk in on... <laughs> no, I'm so guilty because, you know, I married to Dixie for 23 years and we have four wonderful boys, Morgan, Mason, Matthew, and Modine. What's your secret, like, to a healthy relationship? I think, and I think it's true, and I, it's, it, it's, in, it's in my book, Halfway There But For You. And I think that the secret is, is I think, I think that this, you really, it's, it's an endless amount of, 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 of making love. I come home and I just, I, you know, I say, Dixie, I got a, we've got company and she knows without me. And, and, and next thing I know, I, I, I've been, you know, and I don't want to get graphic, but there's not one sink in our home that isn't a little bit loose on the edges. Because, um, I, and I think, and I think that's the secret. I think that's the secret to it all. You're everything that's lovely. Thank you, Molly Shannon. And Thank we'll be right you. back after these commercials. <laughs> Stay tuned for Nathan Lane when we return. <laughs> Hello, I'm Conan O'Brien, and I'm here on Hollywood's Walk of Fame to talk to you about something that is very, very important to me. This woman's dead! Okay. Here in the Walk of Fame, every great actress, actor, director, singing star, dancer, hand model, uh, if I didn't say actor, my apologies. Uh, anyway, they all have their own star to honor them and their great, great body of work. They're all here, right? Wrong. You know who they don't have? My favorite actor of all time, the guy with the mustache from Cheers, Norm's buddy. And why do I choose to worship at the altar of that guy? A, because he was so not crappy at acting. And number two, he was solidly, mildly, always amusing. In fact, it mildly amuses me just to think of him now. But as the great Greek philosopher Aristotle often said, what really frosts the hairs of my hiney is that they won't give a star to the guy with a mustache from Cheers, but they will give a star to the bald guy from Night Court. Or speaking of bald, that bald fruity guy from the Dick Van Dyke Show. Or the semi-bald guy from Whose Line Is It Anyway? Not Ryan Stiles, the other one. If you're like me, or if you just like me, you're saying to yourself, what's it gonna take to get the guy with the mustache from Cheers his own star on the Walk of Fame? I'll tell you what it's gonna take the green stuff, money. People gotta get paid off. I know it's ugly, but so is Ernest Borgnine, and he's got his own star. Send your check or money orders to the committee to get a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for the guy with the mustache from Cheers, Box 193858, Trent, New Jersey. Won't you please help? Now we go out and about with Jiminy Glick. I am absolutely all at Twitter, and it's as if someone has shot me out of a rocket, and I'm feeling kind of a parched quality at the back, and I'm shooting through the air, and I'm seeing a star. And the star is Nathan Lane, the star of the producers. You are one of my idols. I think you're wonderful because you're oh. versatile. And I'll tell you why I like you so much. Yes. The Nightwell commercial. Oh. <laughs> So Thank, thanks for the memories. <laughs> thanks. Oh. You'd, you'd come to the mirror and you'd open it. Oh, do I have a stuffy nose? That's There's right. A, it was good. Yes, it was a, a very uh, lucrative commercial, actually. How'd you get something like that, Nathan? <laughs> well, you know, it starts with an agent. It starts with an agent. And then they send you out and, you know. And I bet you have to go to a lot of people. You sit in a room. Cattle calls. Cow calls. You, you, you've heard What's of that ours? Word? It sounded like you said cow call. <laughs> That's what I heard, anyway. <laughs> That's what you heard? You don't really project. That's not your thing, is it, so much? Well, in the theater it is. In the theater? You do theater? Yeah, but we're in a hotel room now, well, that's so... Oh, my goodness, so we, we are. are. You could actually lower your voice. I could, <laughs> but I won't! <laughs> <laughs> oh! Back 
after the NyQuil commercial, sure. you're in a cattle call. Then what happens, Nathan Lane? Well, you know, eventually they, they narrow it down and then I... I, they? I well, the casting director or... Casting director or for what? A commercial director. For and, what? For the commercial. And, 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 then, and then you recopy? Yeah, yes, yes, you would recopy. And, oh, and the guy they wanted got sick. No. <laughs> no. Oh, you got it right away. No, I played the guy who got sick. Oh, that's wonderful. You dig so deep. I do dig Not deep. since James Lipton <laughs> have I seen <laughs> this kind of excavation of a career. I want to talk about other things because you've Good. had such a wonderful career. I'm just not f that familiar with it. Right. How's your well, lovely wife, by the way? My wife, Dixie, is wonderful. Oh, good. And I'm my glad. Dixie, my four wonderful boys, Morgan, Mason, Matthew, and Modine, the twins. <laughs> and I think, that they're, I think that they're very brave. It's very hard. The four M's. The four M's. <laughs> the four M's. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And, and I, th I think it's very hard for them to be in the limelight. Dixie yes. has been, she's a soulmate. She's yes. an absolute soulmate, and she's my lady of love. Uh, she, I, 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 I've never stopped my lust for her. Really? I have After all these years? After all these years. Sometimes... How do you keep that, that so fresh? Well, I'm on a wonderful medication <laughs> that I'd love to share with you. But sometimes we'll be traveling The just... big V? <laughs> the big V! No, I've never taken Viagra. No. Is that what you're referring to? Well, yes. No, 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 no. Mine is more of a thing that you hook on. <laughs> Do you smell burning toast? <laughs> I was the Lion King. Everyone talked about it. I never saw it. What was oh, that about? Well, it was an animated film. An animated film. For Disney. That, and that you did played quite well. a king. No, you no. Played a, you I, played I played a, a meerkat. A meerkat? Yeah. Is it the method approach? Is it like a Bobby De Niro where you're the whole day the meerkat or you just when, when, they, when they rattle the money in front of you? <laughs> well... <laughs> I never saw Disney rattling any money. Oh, because they're cheap. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. I really, I really, I just, I just love so much of what you've done. And you're doing a wonderful play now. Oh, yes, yes, the producers. The producers? Yeah. And you're, and you're with, who are you, in, who are you in it with? Matthew Broderick. Matthew Broderick. Wonderful. Oh, wonderful. he's wonderful. Yeah. Have he's... you seen his work? <laughs> no. I... <laughs> oh, my goodness. What happened? <clears throat> An old Palmel just flipped up right through my lungs. Oh, wow. That's terrible. What about you worked with that one famous drunk? You're sweating a lot. Is that sweat? No, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not sweat. Oh, okay. um, you, worked, you worked with that one famous drunk actor with the three with the initial. What's his name? I'm always forgetting his name. Uh, Donkey. There's been so many. What? No. Oh, um, George C. Scott. That's it. Oh. <laughs> Was he swerving on the stage all the time? No, no, no. He wasn't? Spewing old booze from his breath. <laughs> he was... <laughs> what was that he, like? He was very kind to he me. He was kind to you. He did occasionally have a drink, but, <laughs> did, but not he, on stage. I bet he had in the little flask he had. <laughs> How come we don't he hear was, from him so much? Well, he, unfortunately, he passed away. No! <laughs> you didn't get the memo. I but... didn't get the memo. <laughs> Thank you, Nathan Lyon. I want to wish you the best of luck. And may you celebrate Broadway, because you are a Broadway star. And you are a star of all three mediums. And you are everything I've ever dreamt you'd be. And when people said, don't talk to him, you'll be bored to death, I said, <laughs> you're not giving him a chance. Because Thank you. no one looks in the mirror and goes, I have a cold. It makes me believe it. <laughs> like a Nathan Lane. Oh. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Mm. Primetime Glick. We'll be back after this. Molly oh, Shannon, I want to thank you so much for being you. Mm. You've been brave. You screwed me, Bubbles. Clay, I so did not screw you. I ran out of time. It happened. Oh, you care more about talking to her than you do about me. And I've got half your blood flowing through my veins. All right, Clay, get out of this scene. Make me. I will put you that way. Hey! Yeah, I'll push knock you it off! Hey! Knock it off! Both of you! Whatever happened to half brotherly love? Oh, he's just mad because I spermed his old lady. <gasps> That's disgusting. His old lady didn't think so. Why you <laughs> You are so dead! Jimmy! I'll kill you! Oh, you think you're so I'm gonna kill you! 
Oh, oh, I know we're uh, going down memory lane a little bit here, but how about this whole Monica Lewinsky thing? What do you make of that? The other day, Clinton goes into a cigar store and says to the guy, what do you recommend for a second date? And it's the whole cigar thing.